Peace, family. It's your boy, Black Star. Today, we're going to get into another episode, and um, we're going to talk about Marcel Dixon's reparation plan. He just put out a reparation plan, um, I believe, the other day. So I wanted to get into it and let y'all see. It's about 11 pages. I'm only going to read a couple pages, maybe like two or three of them, because I just want to get into the meat of it, because he talks about a lot. Let me share my screen so y'all can see this real quick. But... um. Yeah, this is the plan. So <clears throat> I'll show you the very, very top of it. So it's the repair black America to fix America, understanding the case for reparations. Now, Marcel Dixon, again, is running for Congress in South Carolina. So, I mean, support the brother any type of way you can. I mean, so far he's talking that talk and he is uh, a lot different than a lot of these other elected officials, man, he coming in a whole different type of uh, way. So um, let's get into it. Because I showed y'all in another video, previous video, of what in Cobra, NARC, and um, and uh, HR40 was about. And they were nothing burgers, in the words of Tariq Nasheed. So um, let me, y'all supposed to go to page five. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, so here I go. I'm going to start right here down in the bottom. So it says, the case for reparations is well-documented and irrefutable. The case for reparation boils down to two points. Is it a crime against humanity to enslave a human being? That's the one. That's the first point. And the second point is the United States government is financially liable for damages when it egregiously supports enslaving its own citizens. Now, it says within the above two statements, the case is made because he basically was saying. All right, if 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 um, the conversation begins with uh, these two points right here, then the case is made for us deserving uh, reparations because it's a debt owed again. It's a debt owed, not a handout, because a lot of people like to make it seem as though reparations is a handout and it's a debt owed, which is absolutely different than a handout. So again, so um, now it says, however, it is one thing to agree that reparations are owed, but it is quite another to agree on what a settlement looks like. The development of this plan started by answering the most basic questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, where is not a factor. The answer to when is reparations is long overdue, which leaves us with who? Who are reparations for? The individuals who are classified as freedmen or living as free blacks in the United States of America prior to June 19th, 1865, and their descendants who have been reclassified to or to or identified themselves within the past 12 years as mulatto, colored, Negro, black or African-American, which I, I, I love that part right there. It says identified themselves within the past 12 years because you're going to have to go back years of showing what you have been claiming yourself to be on the census because a lot of people, you know, if we start getting reparations, everybody going to act like they black all of a sudden, even though you've been putting um, other and 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 uh, white. It's a, a lot of mixed people like to put that too when they look really white or Spanish people do that a lot. So, um, yeah, that's it. And, and again, this X out any um, uh, immigrants or anybody who just moved over here because you can say, oh, I'm black too and I suffer from racism, white supremacy and all this other stuff. But this is a debt owed. This isn't um, uh, something that's we are asking for based off uh, like recent racism to an extent it is, but like it, it's not also, you know what I'm saying? This is really a debt owed. So we're going to get more into it. So who is responsible to pay the compensation? The United States government who codified the laws which allowed for the inception and existence of American slave slave trade into the United States Constitution solely is responsible for paying reparations. So again, this is not for every white person to be paying, right? Even though it's going to come out to taxes the same way um, when we paid the 
Asians I mean, or the Japanese uh, reparations and the Native Americans who still get reparations to this day, um, we had to pay that out of our tax dollars. So our tax dollars went to their reparations. So you can't be mad if you white or any other race and your uh, tax dollars go to paying us our debt because our our tax dollars went to somebody else's debt that we didn't have anything to do with. We didn't have anything to do with the Japanese going into concentration camps and whatever the hell they was putting them in for the reason for the U.S. government to pay them reparations, um, which uh, Brother Marcel actually, because I got this off his um, website, was he actually put, uh, when we get to the bottom, he put something in there about the um, Japanese reparations that you can actually, it's a PDF. I'll tap on it when I get to the bottom. So um, that was who is responsible, which is the U.S. government, the U.S. government who legally sanctioned slavery. All right. So what is slavery? When you separate the act of slavery from the methods that were used to create and enforce the American slave trade, the answer becomes plain. Slavery is simple, the theft of labor. That's it, you know. Um, we worked for free for hundreds of years and, and you owe, fam. Like we cultivated all the land, we grew the crops, we tended to, the, you know, the, 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 um, all the acres of land, rice, indigo all that stuff bro y'all got stupid rich and people actually till this day are benefiting off the slave labor in the in the stolen land because again we were here before the red native americans so you still benefiting off that let me continue um brutalizing and mistreating slaves was the slaves owner's way of keeping the industry optional and is a separate issue from slavery itself. This plan recognizes that there is absolutely no way to pull a dollar value on the inhumanity that the victims of American slave trade and their descendants have been subject to due to slavery and its aftermath. So um, I'm gonna skip that. So put to put a value on inhumanity would have to determine then they say, what's, what is the value of human beings, freedom, this, that, and the third? What's the value of one lash of a bull whip? I'm not going to read all those, but you get what the person's trying to say. He basically trying to say, what is one single castration worth? What is one single rate worth? You know, we can't we can really get into that because um, I do believe that lawyers, if, if you got lacerated or castrated right now and they sued, and I'm not, this isn't anything to knock on um, Brother Marcel, but I'm just saying, some of these things are things because if you got raped and you filed a lawsuit right now, oh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a worth to it. You feel what I'm saying? It's gonna be some worth to that joint. Cause you, you trust just trust me. So um it says now all right, all these guys, I'm gonna get into what reparations is. So um what are reparations for the purpose of this plan? Reparations is defined as a compensation to freedmen for the value of their labor, which was stolen from them due to their victimization by American slave trade and its aftermath. What is covered? The plan calls for two primary issues to be addressed. The actual value of freedmen's uh, stolen labor, the estimated value of lost opportunity from lost wages. So what is stolen labor? For the purpose of this plan, stolen labor is defined as the actual work performed by slaves slash freedmen from their arrival in 1619 until the emancipation of 1865. So that's over 200 years of absolute free labor. And it's funny because people act like we wasn't supposed to um, like, oh, well, you didn't go through that. I know natives right now to get reparations. I said this in my last video. They still get them checks and they didn't have, they were younger than me. So some of them was older than me, but some of them were younger than me and they absolutely didn't go through anything their ancestors went through. So I don't want to hear it. As a matter of fact, in that, um, the Japanese reparations thing claim, if somebody that was Japanese died, if they died and, uh, their uh, 
kinfolk or kids could have, um, if they didn't put their claim in fast enough and they die, their kids can put the claim in and get the bread. They didn't go through what their parents went through, but they still was able to claim because they died, they were still able to claim that and get their their reparations from what their parents went through. So we don't want to hear any of the arguments, any of the cliche arguments of you didn't go through slavery, so you don't deserve the benefit from it. Crazy, crazy. We getting ours. So um, what does the work include? The estimated aggregated value of all skilled and unskilled labor performed by American slaves between um, 1619 and 1865, approximately 4 million slave work, uh, conservatively an average 12 hour day prior to the end of slavery. The freedom, the freedmen were providing a collective 48 million man hours of work per day. So what is meant by lost opportunity from the wages, uh, lost opportunity of wages, excuse me, um, lost opportunity are what is lost by not having the opportunity to invest or save because you are enslaved and not being paid a wage. For example, uh, the home slash property you cannot buy, lost opportunity. The business you cannot start equals lost opportunity. Uh, the education you cannot pay for, lost opportunity. So how is the value determined for lost opportunities? It really is not possible to determine what each individual freeman, uh, freedman's lost opportunity are. So um, the plan divides the lost opportunity into two category damages for lost property and damages for opportunities lost due to lost wages. Um, these two categories will be each assigned an aggregated value. The aggregation, the aggregate, the aggregated proportion of the settlement derived from these two uh, categories will go into a Freedmen's Community Fund administrated by the newly reconstituted Freedmen's Bureau, because we had a Freedmen's Bureau before that and a Freedmen's Bank, but they stole all the bread out of it. Again, we had over 50 Black Wall Streets, over 50, not just Black Wall Street in Tulsa, not just Black Wall Street in Wilmington, North Carolina, not Wilmington, Delaware, Wilmington, North Carolina. We had several, several Black Wall Streets, many of them, can't even say several because it was over 50, um, and pros uh, prospering towns. So uh, the fund will be used to you, the, uh, the funds will be used to build the infrastructure of the Freedmen's community. How can a value for labor be determined? Next page. This plan takes a common sense approach using the value of two uh, two thousand twenty two dollars, the two thousand and uh, twenty two. So the year basically using the value of two the year two thousand twenty two dollars. We simply multiply the number of hours a slave was required to work per day. Twelve by the number of days a slave was required to work per week. Six by the number of weeks worked in a year, 52, by the average number of years a slave would work, 50, 50 years of, of free labor. Whew. Please see the dollar value for the labor is outlined in the reparations formula document. How will the reparation settlement be administered? Good question. The settlement will include an additional 20 billion for the established Establishment of a newly reconstituted Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau will have a sole responsibility and authority to administer the settlement while it will enjoy the full support of the U.S. government and will be 100 percent autonomous and independent federal agency, which is good because that X's out all U.S. government um, um uh, uh, authority to try to have um, authority over our money. Like, now nah, we don't want you to have anything to do with our bread. We just want you to pass it to the Freedmen's Bureau and let the Freedmen's Bureau pass it out to us. Because you'll try to get slick and say, oh, somebody owe you this, somebody owe you that. But I know for a fact that when it comes down to the native checks, man, you can't touch none of that for no reason. None of it for no reason. 
I don't care what it was, bro. We used to, if they got into a fight in prison, they will find you 200 bucks. They could find you for the, even just not fighting. Just you get in trouble, they can give you a little fine. Yo, they could not touch their money. Not for fines, not for uh child support, not for anything, nothing. Those checks were not allowed to be touched by any state or federal agency, bro. Facts. Absolute facts. So we don't want you trying to take our bread to oh man, you owe taxes, you owe this, you owe that. Nah, we don't owe nothing. So give me all my bread. I know how this goes. So you ain't that's why I said I love. I love having these uh, uh, discussions with people because a lot of people don't even know what be going on with the Native Americans. They just know that they got reservations and casinos. Now it's a lot. It's a lot. It's real deep with this type of stuff. The tax exemption. They ain't gotta pay no taxes. It's just really deep. So let me keep going. Um, okay, the Freedmen's Bureau. Yeah, okay, I read that part. The government or any government agency's role in the administrating of reparation settlements is pure, purely advisory. Yes. All other issues will be settled as they arise in negotiations by the authority of the Freedmen's Bureau or its uh, designee. How are taxes to be collected? All reparation payments slash distributions will be 100 percent tax free from federal, state, and local income tax. I told you. It has to be. It has to be because you do it for everybody else. And I think that's about it because this is the end of it. That's why I said, okay, so let me show you this. Um, yeah, that was the end. But let me show you, um, see, the history of the uh, Japanese-American re uh, reallocation um this is traffic and uh, commuting. U.S. begins paying out French reparations. See what I'm saying? Uh, onto the Holocaust survivors and their hairs. I remember that because Obama gave out some money for that. That's 2016. You see that? 2016. Let me see if that go if it goes to something. No, it ain't letting me click on that joint, man. I'm trying to tell you. If I was on his website, it would go to it. But um, see the uh, rep slavery reparations, Holocaust reinstitution negotiations, the state of reparations. I'm trying to tell you, man. I like this plan. Um, he actually broke down on um, brother Marcel actually broke down on uh, Twitter that uh, you know he he had a um, I think it was. When they did the numbers, each person would get two point eight million dollars and they would have to distribute that out for um about a couple years. So they're saying every year get each uh descendant of a slave or FBA freedman would get each individual a hundred and ninety-eight thousand or hundred and eighty-nine thousand um every year until you got to the whole two point three million dollars so um yeah non-taxable we want land too it's, it's a whole lot of tax exemption he uh he said was in um was on the table so it's a lot man i think definitely definitely nobody's plan is like this um at least on a uh uh what you call that a political level. That's what I'm trying to get at. So on a political level, nobody's stuff is like that. I believe he said he talked to Dr. Claude Anderson and a couple and a few other people. But um, yeah, man, this is what it is. Reparations. Don't let nobody try to argue you about, um, yo, know, anybody trying to say, and I tell that to everybody, bro, because people are like, man, we ain't never going to get that. I'd be like, man, do you... Anybody who says that, you already know they're not even fighting for reparation. Because anything you fighting for or trying to accomplish, you never put that energy out there of it can't happen or you wouldn't even be trying to do it. So we already know anybody who's coming with that energy isn't trying to get it. You feel what I'm saying? But they will always collect the check. That's the part I don't like. Um, but, you know, you just going to have to deal with it because if they fall under the guidelines of being a free person, they're going to have to get it. But the more we all work, the easier it's going to come to, um, easier it's going to be for us to get to get it. 
You feel what I'm saying? It's just almost like how the Black Lives Matter, everybody was in the streets screaming Black Lives Matter. Everybody's little symbol on Facebook, Black Lives Matter, with their little picture around it. Like, if we get on that same time with reparations, it's no way we can't get it. It's no way. We just not making no noise. Just like I, I, I told somebody the other day, they said, so how, um, um, not how they're gonna pay us. He said, uh, why would they why would they why would they want to give us reparations? Or they ain't never they never gonna give us reparations. They ain't they ain't never been trying to I said, yeah, but when was we when was we pushing for reparations? Who was ever pushing for it? Like name I said, name somebody that was pushing for it. I knew people that was pushing for it on the low, but he didn't know them people. He like, I don't I, I mean, uh, then try like nah niggas, we ain't been pushing for the shit. Nigga, you ain't closed mouth, don't get fed, fam. Closed mouth don't get fed, bro. You gotta demand your shit. And are you giving it to other people? You giving out bread to these uh um to these immigrants, these people who illegally got into the country. Illegally, they illegally got into the country and they got um they getting four hundred and fifty thousand piece from the kids and the parents who got separated at the border. You feel what I'm saying? You giving it to Afghans, you giving it to Ukraines, like come on, bro, Ukrainians or whatever, bro, like you giving bread to people, bro. We want our bread, man. We want our cheese. Definitely want our cheese. So, um, you know, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to get um the plan and let y'all see what the plan was about, you know, what, what he's talking about. So this is a person who's actually pushing for us. He's not pushing for no other people to get it, but the people who um whose descendants were affected. You feel what I'm saying? Because we still affected by some of that stuff, man. Simple fact that, uh, you know, a lot of these slaveholders, families got a lot of bread. And these people still alive. You got to understand, man, 1865 wasn't that long ago. Really wasn't, man. Like, my grandma was born in 1910. You going like a couple years before that, it was the 1800s. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Great grandma born in probably the... um. Man, she might have been born in the, the, the damn <laughs> 1800s. You feel me? Like, come on, dog. This is this is crazy, dog. This is right around the corner. So we, you definitely can't say we're not affected. And I don't even think it's going to be hard for, for black people. That's another thing. Black people, we are going to have to get with our families, put the BS to the side. You're going to have to get with your families and start trying to figure out um, where your family was landed on the census, and if and if you know, what I mean, you can find your family on the census because that's what is going to come. As soon as them checks start coming, they, that, that's the only way them checks going to come. But as soon as they start coming, that's the only way they going to come to you because you're going to have to prove it. Because this is how we're going to keep all these fake people from being out there. That's why I said that whole the last twelve years you had to be um. Uh, uh, saying you was black because you're going to get people just saying they black just because. Oh, I'm, I'm black on the census. Next thing you know, the whole whole America going to be, they're going to say, hold up, well, America went from uh, 80-something percent white to, <laughs> that shit went from 70-something percent white to straight 100 percent black. Now everybody African-American. No, no, fam. No, you can't get in on this. You heard? Can't get on these reparations. But that's what I'm saying, bro. Y'all got to hashtag reparations, man. Can't be quiet about it, man. Can't sit back and let everybody do all the groundwork. Then you sit here and follow and chase Cory Booker and all these people who don't want it. That's why I said, well, matter of fact, let me go back to this. I'm gonna go right back two seconds because I want I wanna um I do want y'all to see one thing. Hold on. I want y'all to see that. See, when what's the name with HR 40, you go on HR 40's page, they're gonna tell you that this is not cash payments. He telling you on here, nigga, this is this is for cash, bro. This is for cash payments, dog. Oh man, I hope I can get to it. But yeah, this is we if ain't nobody talk about cash payments, we don't want to talk. We don't want to talk about nothing else. We don't want to talk about no free college, free this, because you about to give that to every American anyway. Cause the moment you do it for us, you're gonna do it for everybody else, because everybody's gonna start complaining for you. Um Oh man, I must have skipped it. But yeah, um, yeah, we don't want no free college. We don't want none of that, man. We don't want none of that. We want straight up cash, and we want land too. We want land too. There's a lot of this other stuff. He was just 
Let me see if I can get to it. Give me one second, people. I think he said something compensation. I can't find it right now, man. But yeah, man, we don't want we don't want no free college. We don't want none of that. None of that. Let me take that off. We don't want none of that. But he he definitely talked about cash payments. We want it in cash payments, and you know, we don't want nothing else, man. We need that guap. We need that fatty. You feel me? That moolah. We don't want nothing else. They we, we don't want your fucking bonds. We don't want your little whatever the hell else you gonna try to get your food stamp car. I don't want none of that shit. I want cash. Same way you was dropping them checks during Corona, bro. We want the same checks the same way. We want we want it right in our account, dog. We ain't trying to hear none of that. Matter of fact, I don't even want it like that because I want you to give it to the Freedmen's Bureau, and then. I want you to um, want us to get it dispersed. But that's it, man. Follow uh, Marcel Dixon. Support the brother. Right now, he's running for Congress in South Carolina. So, um, you know, stay tuned, man. I'm going to have some more updates with um, with this reparations thing because I feel like we, we got the ball rolling. And as long as we can get all black people on all cylinders, riding for one another, we can get stuff done, man. All right, peace, family. I'm up out of here, man. Y'all stay blessed. Um, you know, stay out the way. Be safe, and let's get it, man. We try to get these reparations.